At the end of summer, when we start going indoors, outside the gnomes are coming to life again. And they help the fairies and the trees turn everything into beautiful autumn colors. We need to help these little gnomes and I love to make them. I make them out of acorns that I gather in the forest and I make them out of wooden pack dolls. In this video, I will show you how I do these, how I make these, and I hope you will join me. Below this video, you will find the link to the video where you see more of me gathering acorns and the countryside that I live in. And for now, let's make some gnomes. So these are the materials you will need white glue i'm using tacky glue and just plain white crafting glue you need a set of pliers an awl obviously you need your acorns some wooden beads or wool beads toothpicks felt either scraps or you could use whole pieces of felt um, use what you have you can use synthetic felt you can use wool felt you can use a blend it doesn't really matter for these tiny people um, you'll need embroidery needles embroidery floss and if you like it, you could use some gold thread, you, you need some beads, really sharp scissors for cutting the felt, and scalloped scissors or pinking shears if you have them. These are optional, but this is something you really need. And like you see here, I've got the acorns to make the acorn gnomes, but if you can't get any acorns not the right ones there's always the option of using these wooden pack dolls they come in a big variety i've got a whole box here i buy them at specialty shops as well as the cheap shops you know the kind of like dollar store that you have in the us um, here in europe um, i found them in a store um, like Action or um, Teddy. They don't have them all the time, but if you come across them and you think of making gnomes, that you, then you can take them along. But specialty shops always have them. Specialty shops for doll making or for Waldorf toys. They have, they have them all the time. So, Let's start making a doll. I've got my fresh acorns here. I am going to find some nice shapes. And I also found a couple of acorns that, well, these are not any use. I mean, you can see the difference. You don't need to know the trees, the kind of oak trees, because, well, I don't, I should, I should look for them what what they are called but i didn't because well in the end you will see by yourself that these doesn't stand up and these one do so you need these and if you can't find them again get the pack dolls because well they make nice <coughs> nice gnomes also like you see here this one is made out of a pack doll and this one is made out of an acorn. And they're equally nice. At least I think. <laughs> but let's find some acorns that I can use. I should have done this before I turned on the camera, I think. <laughs> I think this one is nice and this one is really nice. And these ones for, were from last year. I can use them, but they will probably split. But 
We will find out. Let me try to take off the cap. Because I want this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and the cap is even still usable so putting these aside and like you see they all vary in in height and but look this is how I normally find them so not that wide but taller but hey we use what we have <laughs> everything is going everywhere well and this is why this video is not for children but i take off this top bit then I get my own and I carefully if they're fresh like these ones I found these like four days ago then normally this goes fine now let me do it with one that I found last year and you see why taking off this point is relevant because well now already a little hole has been started and here you will probably um, yeah just lose the all but for these ones I am going to protect my fingers a little bit better even I hope you can still see it yeah you can but this one is really difficult to get a hole in let me see if I can take a little bit more off Yeah, and you see it's split already. That's why you can use old acorns, but it's not a good idea. I'm going to just keep these as decoration or maybe, maybe, maybe try. Is this a fresh one? I do think this is a fresh one. Yeah, keep these old ones as decoration and just use the fresh ones. You see the difference? I can get my all in here quite easily and um, I'm making the hole inside a little bit bigger. Let's do this one too. So if you want to do this craft with children, then please make the gnomes or the start of the gnomes like this the night before or when they're in school. But don't do this when they are around because, well, I don't think this is a very good idea with children around. But after you put the holes in there, you take a toothpick and you push it inside. The acorn. Let 
let's do this one too. And if you are really mindful of using materials, obviously you could cut this in two and use the other half, but I like doing it like this for demonstration purpose, because now you can see that well, this one, I want to push it in even better. Although when we glue the tops on, the glue will seep through to the acorn and it will secure it. Obviously, these doesn't lo last you a lifetime because, well, these are going to yeah, deteriorate over time. This will last you longer. But I think that there's so much fun in crafting. Excuse me. There's so much fun in crafting with things we find in nature. So let's see. What happens if we put on different measurements of wooden balls or even a felt ball? Hmm, does this need a large one or a small one? I think a large one. Yeah. So if you are at a... Um, craft store and you want to know what kind of size wooden beet you you are looking for well take your acorns with you and um, look for beads that in your opinion look really nice i think this will in the end benefit from a smaller one but i also really like these ones with the bigger heads I have to get a drink. I'm sorry. I've got a frog in my throat. And now these are ready for glue. I put some glue on the toothpick and on the base where it went into the acorn. And I'm going to put a dab of glue on top here. And this needs some drying time now. Why did I pick a tube of glue that is almost finished? And if this happens, don't worry, it's going to be covered up. Dab of glue at the top. This one needs a little bit more glue. This one also needs is a second toothpick. This one can dry. And this one with the wooden bowl, I am going to put a dab of glue on here. But not at the top, just down here so it stays. Now this needs to dry, but we can move on with the gnomes that I already made.
this can be put away we don't need it anymore the glue we do need the toothpicks we don't need but we do need these pliers to cut these off once they are dry now let's start using some felt i've got a big big pile of felt here and even some more <laughs> i've got leftovers because well these just need tiny bits and i took out some of my fairy tale felt this is made in the netherlands um, if you live in the netherlands or in germany the specialty shops that sell these waldorf doll making equipment they've got this felt and if you are in the us um, i don't know or in any other country in the world i don't know if this felt is made where you live but um yeah obviously this is so beautiful to use although i've got to mention on these little dolls sometimes you have to look really carefully because well this is beautiful but if i use this size then i might as well use some regular felt because you won't see the color changes but yeah this is a treasure this felt is not cheap but i love it so much and i thought i would show it to you but let's also take some regular felt because well this one is a really simple one i just used plain pieces of felt um, nothing special and the first one that i'm going to do is this one and we're going to make a simple gnom together i did put some uh, felt underneath here when i'm using the peg dolls i want them to have a coat yeah a dress a coat underneath their cloak when i'm using the acorns i think it's so beautiful and it already looks like yeah a little dress or something at least it's different from the color of the head so it doesn't look like they're naked underneath their cloak their cloak because well with these obviously this color isn't that different but you can see that the material is different but if you don't put anything underneath with the with the wooden peg dolls uh, to me they, <laughs> they look naked okay i know this is strange but hey this yeah that's what it looks like to me um i'm not going to give you any measurements i'm not going to give you any patterns because uh, you cannot make a pattern if your sizes are all different and you don't know what you will find so let me just show you how easy it is to to make this just working with what you have because well let me start with a better scrap making the hat the hat you can see i've got these pointy hats you fold the felt around the head felt always has a little give so you can make it really snug yeah i fold it until i've got the head completely covered i put my nail in there and make a little snip
like this. Drying it again on the head. You see, it's really snug. That doesn't matter because felt always has a little give, but you want it to be quite tight. Now you've got this. And here is your head. Let me get a pencil and show it to you more clearly. So now, here is the back side of the head. And to make a hat for your gnome, just take a pencil and draw on a triangle with a rounded part here. So let me put a pin in here. So this is all you need to do. You take your scissors and then you cut along this line. As long as this back part is fitting on the gnome and it is really snug, but that is perfectly fine. As long as this part, back part is fitting, there will be a hat for your gnome. And this one is really large, like this one. This one is a little shorter, but obviously his hat was shorter. If you want shorter hats, that's also a possibility, then just make this point shorter. So for demonstration purposes, <laughs> let's make it shorter. Then I start here. So I keep the back the same, but I just make the point a lot shorter. And now the gnome's head will be a lot shorter. So now what I'm going to do is use a blanket stitch on here and then we'll glue it on to the gnome. So let me get some embroidery thread and show you how I do a blanket stitch. So I've zoomed you in so you can see properly. I'm using a single strand of embroidery floss um, just because I like it. You can also use two strands. It's just your personal preference. Make a little start. I like my stitches to be really small. But they're equally nice if you make bigger stitches, just make sure they are even and uh, yeah. This is to me so mindful, this slow stitching and doing just these small stitches one at a time. I prefer using um, embroidery needles with a rounded tip instead of a really sharp tip. Um, I don't know why exactly, but I found them one day and I really like them for doing this kind of work. So now I'm looking for the best spot to put this hat because, um, yeah, I'm looking for a front side and a back side. And I think this would be 
beautiful as a front side. Don't they make a lovely couple? <laughs> So I am going to put some glue on here because I'm really quite happy with how it looks. So I'm just putting a little glue on the inside here and be mindful that you use white glue because if you use things that contain um, acetone, the acetone will go through the, the felt and will show, so that won't be very nice. You can wiggle it around a little bit. Yeah, I'm quite happy with this. So now we're going to make this one a cloak. Um, for the cloak of this little gnome, I am going to use the same felt that I used underneath here. So they, they match and they get cohesive. And this again, I can't give you any measurements. I cannot give you a pattern because it kind of works the same. Because every acorn has a different circumference so you just need to eye this and um, you put it around the acorn again make a snip and now we're going to look at the height because we want this cloak to have a, a color and <laughs> that was the word a color so i am going to make it a little bit bigger than the gnome itself and going to give it a snip again here so this is no science this is yeah this is just trial and error sometimes but <laughs> Cut it like this, cut it like this, and now I have this rectangle that is not really straight, but that doesn't matter. A sip of water again. What I did do for this cloak, and I am going to do again for this cloak, is round the corners. And if you are not sure doing this just by eye, then take a little glue bottle, put it on here, draw a line with your pencil and then cut it out. But it, this doesn't have to be exact. So now you put the cloak on the doll and you want to see where you want to make the, the fold for the color. I put a couple of pins in here. Now I am using a double thread, maybe I've got some thread left, I do, I could also take dark brown. I'm leaving a tail here because I want to make a little bow. And 
and now it's just a running stitch towards the other end. So you've got something like this. And now I start pulling. And you see it covers the acorn beautifully. And I want it quite tight onto his neck, her neck. <laughs> Is this a he or a she? I'm not sure yet. Like this. I think I left my tail too short to make a bow. So I am going to snap this one off. And put, that might also be nice. As a closure, I'm going to put a little bead on there. Tying it off at the back. And now folding the color. And I've got this lovely pair of gnomes. I don't draw on faces, obviously you could, and I would recommend if you draw on a face, well, let me try it, but I would put it in pencil because if you make a mistake, you can always correct it if it is in pencil. Don't use markers because some of these wooden beads, they are so porous that when you put on a marker, it will bleed and uh, that will be horrible. I've done it, I've made that mistake and um, that is not really nice. But let me see if I can. This is a really hard pencil. Yeah, 3H, so it, it, it won't do. I will take another pencil and show you how you make eyes. I think I've got a better pencil here. It's much softer, it's 2B. This one was 3H. Yeah, this is much better. So just make two round. And there you've got yourself some eyes. Now if these this one has got eyes, then this one needs eyes too. So now they've got eyes. I like them equ equally without eyes, but well, this is rather nice. Um, I like them really plain, so I don't put on any smiles or anything i like them the way they are like this but although i do like their faces plain i also like to embellish the felt quite a bit so this one i did with um 
gold embroidery thread and um, some sequins. And this one is again a wooden peg doll. This one is a little bit, bit strange because, well, I thought the head was too small for the body, but I do want to give it a try. I mean, these pegs are much more expensive. I think these cost three times the amount of this peg doll. And I did want to give these a try. So I am going to dress this one up. Do a blanket stitch here and then make the cloak like you just saw. And then I'll show you what this one looks like. So this is what this one looks like. I have um, made a little error with these points. I've just snipped them into his collar. But um, yeah, they're too small to really bend well. So, but I still like it. I. It is a different shape and that is perfectly fine. And I've got this really small one. But now I have to teach you how to make these undergarments for the wooden peg dolls. So let me take another wooden peg doll and um, show you how you, because this we did on the acorn. Here I showed you yeah, kind of different things that you can do but let's take this peg doll and dress it up i am going to zoom you out a little bit again because i want to look for colors that make everything look cohesive drum roll <laughs> am I going to use? I'm going to pause the video here a little bit and um, go through this pile of yummy felts and um, going to get myself some felt because I do think I need to take my time in deciding what I want and uh, that would be a boring part of the video. So I'll be back. So I found the felt that I wanted to use and these are also scraps, leftovers. But I also wanted to show you that um, using this kind of felt, if I make the hat like from a corner, I have a little leftover here. If I decide to make the hat like this, I mean the scrap is perfectly fine but I would cut out all the lovely green bits and I want some green in his hat so that's why this is a little less economical to use but you have to try different parts I really like this so now I'm making a fold again like this, putting my nails in here and giving it a little snip. Like this. Trying it on again. It is snug again, but I want it to be snug. And now I can just cut it like this and have myself a hat. <clears throat> With this felt, I turn it around to see what side is best. 
because there's always a better side <laughs> to this felt. And I really like this side. Yeah, so this is going to be my hat. And I am going to make a cloak out of this because, well, in this you don't see m much color variation. Um, but there's no trying or no, sorry. So I found the felt that I wanted to use and these are also scraps, leftovers. But I also wanted to show you that um, using this kind of felt, if I make the hat like from a corner, I have a little left over here. If I decide to make the hat like this, I mean, the scrap is perfectly fine, but I would cut out all the lovely green bits and I want some green in his hat. So that's why this is a little less economical to use. But you have to try different parts. I really like this. So now I'm making a fold again like this, putting my nails in here. And giving it a little snip. Like this. Trying it on again. It is snug again, but I want it to be snug. And... Now I can just cut it like this and have myself a hat. <clears throat> With this felt, I turn it around to see what side is best. Because there's always a better side <laughs> to this felt. And I really like this side. Yeah. So this is going to be my hat. And I am going to make a cloak out of this. Because, well, in this you don't see m much color variation. Um, but there's no trying. Or no, sorry. So I've zoomed you out a little bit again because looking back I saw that I wasn't in frame all the time. So excuse me for that. I was working here. <laughs> um, so recollecting. I've got the hat sorted. Yeah. And now... I need to turn this into a square or a rectangle and I'm looking at least I need to be able to fold it around and I'm looking for nice pieces. I am going to get some kind of measuring tool to turn this into a square. Found it. <laughs> so looking at this peg doll, I want the cloak to be rather large so I can make a collar like these ones because I'm not really happy with how these turned out. So I want a bigger one. Let me see if I can yeah, just cut it off here. Um, yeah, this pencil is better. Oh, this side is also so yummy, yummy, yummy. <laughs> uh, yeah, 
and I also found a little piece of leftover brown felt that I also used on this cloak and I am going to use this to cover his body or her body I just need a little bit but not all things at the same time I want the cloak to be a little bit bigger because it can be big enough here. Oh, this is also so beautiful. But we can use these again in another project. Not showing. I need the other pencil. And with these, I am just going to round the corners again. And to show you what I do if I cannot just do these by eye. But let me see if you can see what I'm doing. Putting this on there. Rounding the corner. You can hardly see it. Like this. And you can fold these oh I love this so much this felt is just so beautiful I cannot decide on which side I'm going to use yet Yeah, this side is beautiful. So this is going to be the inside. And now to make this gnome a little bodice. I don't have to cover the whole body of the doll because you're not going to see that. Let me see what is the best side for the face. I think it is this. So I'm going to glue this piece of felt on and again now it is really important that you don't use any acetone based glue. Because it will go through the felt and it will make stains. And this doesn't. So this needs to dry and then I'll be back. So now this is dry enough, I can glue on the hat. I have blank stitched it while this was drying. And if it is too snug, you can 
pull on the felt, especially when you use wool felt, you can pull it and it will stretch and it will even fit better. So putting a little glue again on the inside. And gluing it on. And now the same method that I did with the other gnome. And here I am using a couple of pins because I do want the sides to be even. So a running stitch to the other side. And my thread breaks. Oh, <laughs> that happens. Well, one is still on there, so it will work. I'm hoping, fingers crossed. And let me put a little bead on here again. Um, where are my gold beads? Right in front of me. And here again is a beautiful little gnome. I'm going to make a couple of more gnomes. And I can also show you because this has dried enough. So where are my pliers? I'm just going to snap this off. And this doesn't matter that this is sticking out because... I am going to put a hat like this on. Also these two. This one with the woolen ball. And the last one. I am going to turn these gnomes into, <laughs> these acorns into gnomes. Um, also these ones and uh, show you what I end up with. Maybe you saw this already at the beginning of the video, but then you know what they looked like before they were beautiful little gnomes. 
So sweeties, here are all the gnomes that I made so far on a row. And I'll try to explain what I did. I mean, you saw me do a couple of them. And in the beginning, I mentioned these scalloped scissors. I've used them on this doll. But in my mind, I made the color too short. But it turned out okay. On this one, I also used these, sheer, these scissors. And this is what I like best, a big color on the cloak. This, I did the color separate and I hand um, cut these scallops. These, this one is one of my favorite because of the autumn colors. Um, this one I also like because these to me still are fall colors, but this could also be one like for Halloween or something. If I give it a little broom, hold on, I will get a little broom. I've got this one, a little broom. I, I think I will keep it like this because now it can really be like a kind of witchy gnome. I also like that. This one reminds me of foggy mornings here in the Netherlands and, uh, well, in the northern parts of Europe. We get quite a lot of fog in autumn. And these colors remind me of foggy mornings. This one is one of the plainest, but I also really like the color combination. For this one, I took out some crocheted lace and um, well on the back because these edges you they will fray I mean you can't change that but it's on the back and I've glued this on and I did gather the top part of this crocheted lace and I really like this one as well and this one I made with different colors, but my neighbors are building a new house and this one is going to them to either put in the wall or keep in their house because in my mind, this will protect their house against creatures crawling in that you don't want crawling in because there is already a gnome living there. So with that in mind, I'm going to give this to them and uh, that's why it's also a little bit magical so this will protect this gnome will protect their house i have two left um i'll probably play with these ones later i love the fact that they're so different in shape and uh, this took me a couple of hours to make all of these I hope you give this a try too and uh, let me know if you like making gnomes and um, what you think of this. If you're new here and you would like to stick around, please subscribe and to all of you who have been here for such a long time, thank you so much. Your comments, your likes, they mean the world to me, they help out my channel so much and um, I hope to see you again really soon. I think these gnomes will also look really, really nice with paper lanterns. I've made some paper lanterns last year. I will put the link to that video down below. And in the next couple of weeks, I will be making some paper lanterns again. Lanterns again. So for now, thank you for being here. Bye bye.